Hello everyone. We are finally here and it is great to see you all. Hopefully we'll have a few people coming on tonight. I'm just finishing small little setup details so that we can be together for an hour to connect. I'm a little bit out of breath, it's true. <laughs> so welcome to my world. This is I've, I've shown a close-up of where we're going to be creating tonight, and I'm just using my phone. Believe it or not, I had a full-on crash out of everything I was um, working with uh, on my hard drive. Sorry, it's a little jiggly. I'm just trying to make this smaller, but in fact, whoops, I can't. That shows my computer's at the back. Sorry, gang, that doesn't help us. There we go. At least I'll be able to zoom in. So... We're going to have a pretty informal time. I'm going to get right into creating with you because I want to be able to have these opportunities uh, so that we can, uh, you know, they're going to start on time, hopefully finish on time, and every week we'll do a little bit more together. Yeah, that's the backside of my studio you're seeing. So there we go. We were zoomed in. I'm showing you right off the top. We're going to be working on a nest tonight. Now this is just a little wee one that I did with Station Gallery, and they have free programming on their YouTube channel. If you wanna hop over to Station Gallery at any time, you can do that, and you can learn how to make a simple nest, just like we're doing tonight. But if you wanna look at a, how a few others came to be, then, then you can hop over to their channel. This one was made with an old rag. I like to paint with rags. And I'm showing you this because I want you to see that just thumbtacks, rags, some gesso, and glue are what you need to create a beautiful nest. And I haven't finished this one yet. I wanted to just show it to you in process. We're actually going to use a canvas. Um, tonight you might have a board at home or you might have a plate or, you know, some other, anything really. You can paint on a shirt if that's what you want to do. Just stretch it on a across something so that you can create on it. My hope is as we are just creating and sharing with one another, we will benefit from being with each other, even if, even if that means we are uh, visiting across a screen. So I'm just gonna say hello in person and then I will zoom back out to uh, start painting. Sorry, because I'm using my phone. I have these some slight challenges more than I would have normally. So I'm just gonna say hi really quick. Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to my world. This is where I create and uh, finish commissions. It's a small studio here in Bowmanville. I, I said hello at the beginning of the pandemic and I'm still here creating, trying to figure out how to pivot. And at the same time, I have a real passion for people's hearts and their care and well-being in communities. So. This is a barrier-free opportunity. You are welcome uh, to tip or donate something and receive a tax deduction for that, for sure. You're welcome to do that, but there is no expectation on you to do anything other than sit back with a cup of tea and enjoy, or perhaps you want to be creating alone. So our big tools this evening are going to be, you can use any straight edge you want, or you can use paintbrushes. This is a, a key card from a hotel. And I decided also I, I might use this. This is an old um, floppy disk. Yeah, you know what? I might as well still use it for something, right? Uh, please let me know where you're from. I'd love to see that in the feed and be able to say hello when possible, um, if, if you don't mind. That would be awesome for me. And then I'm trying to be able to watch comments as they come in. But it doesn't, um, I'm not sure. Again, I'm kind of new to this. I just knew that, here's the thing, I just knew that I wanted to be able to um, create with you. So if I miss your comments tonight because I can't see them properly or or I connect properly, please know that I'll try to respond and read things that you have said. If you do make a comment and if not, then well, I'm getting some messages here. So maybe, I don't know. It might just, be, yeah, there we go. I think we're good. Okay, so uh, 
Feel free to share this while it's live, and I'm a bit fumbly, of course, at the beginning of these things, trying something new. You, if you have an old key card, a credit card, a library card, any straight edge, that will be helpful for you. I'm going to talk to you about the type of paint I use. Uh, I use a lot of water. I use a lot of sponges. And for myself, I often, you'll see me wearing black gloves, but I would love to see, hear your comments on this. I wear black mechanics gloves because they're thicker and I can reuse them many times over and I don't have the same um, challenges with uh, disposing of gloves but tonight I'm just going to put on some light colored ones one of my very dear friends suggested I check with the rest of you um, she had uh, watched a lot of different images over the years I guess and the black gloves just didn't work for her and I'm always wearing gloves to protect my hands otherwise I'm always trying to dig paint out of my hands so instead, I'm wearing uh, just bone colored ones tonight. Um, please let me know. And she said, maybe it's just me. Maybe you could check with other people and see, uh, see what, how they respond. All right, let's get in a little closer here so we can uh, start uh, creating together. All right. Now, um, when you're looking at a bird's nest, if you think about it, every week is going to be a little different here. So this week, I thought, well, you can create uh, some basic lines. We're not really going to hit on composition much uh, this week, other than to say uh, just simple things like uh, rule of thirds. We'll, we'll touch on that. We'll see how well I comply. I often don't comply well, but your image will be stronger and better if you do. Okay, so one third of the way in, roughly. Clearly, I'm not exact. One third up. Anything here, 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 or here in your composition, anything in these areas will be stronger for you than if you uh, just put something, say, smack dab in the middle of your canvas. Hopefully you can see if I put my chalk over here, you can see it's stronger. If I put my chalk over here, you can see it's stronger, right? Sometimes it's important in life to be able to um, think about what we're doing and what kind of composition we're going to to use how what kind of music we're going to play with our life if you like if we give it a little bit of forethought maybe that would be stronger now the beauty of charcoal is it it wipes off I use a vine charcoal I'll show that to you and I'm going to show you the box because again this is all about giving you pretty much everything I know as I've learned over the years I want you to learn as well okay so this is the brand I buy to coat willow charcoal. When you take them out of the box, you can actually see uh, the bend of the wood that has been charred into charcoal. So I'll leave that stick out. The other thing that I like to use sometimes, and you have to wear, you do have to wear a mask if you're wearing, if you're painting publicly with this. I keep mine in its little bag just because it's so messy. Okay, but it's just powdered, pure powdered charcoal. So that allows you to dip and draw with your fingers, or you can dip your paintbrush, but it does drop down. So if you're painting, if you're creating in a, a living room or something, and you're working in powdered pigments of any kind, whether they're pastels or uh, pigments that are powdered and put into mediums, then uh, you want to be cognizant of the, the powder you're dropping. So for me, um, a nest is a series of sticks branches, twigs, straw, hair, anything that a bird can find. They're very resourceful, right? Birds are resourceful. And no matter how many times someone steals their eggs, they come back. They have a built-in resiliency. They come back and uh, lay more eggs. You just can't get rid of them. And I love the fact that robins, you know, they come every year. Often they lose their first nest. They may lose their second nest of eggs, but they come back the year after. They come back the year after that and the year after that. Oh, incidentally, if you would love, if you could, let me know how the sound is, will you? Because um, again, I my system, the way I had it set up, wasn't uh, able to work tonight because of crashing that, that uh, hard drive. Uh, but I, again, didn't want to be um, discouraged in not creating with you because I said I would. So here we are with just my phone. So a stick. I'm dipping it in my powder. Another stick, right? See the negative space? Now what I'm doing is I'm just putting this nest 
sticks. I'm just putting sticks in. That's all I'm doing, right? Sticks, sticks, more sticks, more sticks, and more sticks. Now, normally, I would often just paint right in here, but for our sakes, just so you can get a sense of what you might do, maybe there's even a branch in here. Maybe there's a branch that the nest is sitting on. Branches, they're not straight lines. They're they're curved, they bend. Just leave your you just leave your brush long enough or your, your piece of charcoal or your paint if you're going directly to paint long enough to be able to draw a line through. Or keep a, a sorry, a, a line that bends and curves. Oh, I'm already having so much fun. How was your week? I'd love to know how your week was. Mine's been a little challenging. And yet here we are creating together, which is the whole point of this creative spa online. Again, whether you're watching or you're painting, that's all we need right there. Now I did toss aside what I normally use to lift off the, um, the charcoal. But for, let's see if we can do it just with a, another paintbrush and maybe a little bit of water. It won't really matter if some of that gets muddied in with the paint, but I'm a big fan of sponges. Yes, regular sponges. Once they're done in the kitchen, I snag them down into my studio to use them. So I'm just cleaning up some of this extra charcoal. You could use a rag and a dab of water. You could use your kneadable eraser. Again, use the tools. Big thing for me, when you, anyone is in a lesson with me, you're using the tool as it was designed. So there's a beautiful straight edge on this. You have a coarse one there, a soft one here. You can use this straight edge to do your creating. Right, now I'm going to just dip my paintbrush in water. I think I'll use the same paintbrush I was just using. And I'm going to use a rag on my knee just to get some of this uh, excess pastel or charcoal, if you like, off of here so I don't have to have it muddying up my paint so much when I go to paint because my kneadable eraser has gone missing since I did not have it pull it out for this. I thought, oh, I don't need a needle eraser. I'll just use, I thought I'll just go straight to paint. See how that just cleans that up? The charcoal just disappears because it's natural. It's really important that you have a natural charcoal. Um, many of you, incidentally, know much more about painting and creating than I do, or ever will possibly. Um, that isn't really the point of this. It's not about how amazing some of us are. It's about just being together. And you have things I can learn. I might have a few tricks of things you can learn from and hopefully just enjoy each other. And spend an hour together every week. And if you're having a really hard week, you know what? Let us know. Uh, maybe just putting it down. Maybe just putting it down so someone can read it would be helpful to you. Right. Okay, my next friend that I want to mention to you is I have a love affair with Jesso. Yes, Jesso and I get along very well. We've uh, been creating forever together. Now, it doesn't matter which kind you use. This is a Liquitex Jesso, and yes, I, I go through tubs of this. However, I find these bottles very helpful. So even if you start with bottles and you go into a, a tub format, um, just know that uh, you can keep these bottles and reuse them to a degree. They tend to dry out and crack, but you can at least use it for a period of time uh, over and over again. Okay, so I'm gonna put some gesso. I, I'm using tonight. You can often, I'll use, um, again, recycled food containers and whatnot to create in. This is just a small palette. I appreciate having um, the 
thumb hole to be able to hold my, my paints on it. And I'm just going to put some gesso down and clean up some of those um, edges. Before you, if, if you want to do a, a background color before you start, it's very, it's wise obviously to do your color first. The way you hold your brush, if for me, that's critical, right? So for me, I, I say to people, I, it's not a pencil. I'm not, I'm not holding it like a pencil. I'm holding it like I'm a, a sculptor and I'm going to cut and carve and move around. In fact, I think I'll give a little bit uh, greater distance if I can on this camera so you can just get maybe a sense of, there we go, a, a little bit more of um, how the hands move and stuff here. So I'm just putting in some light edges to show where the curves might be on my nest. Contrasting it with the background to have it pop out a bit. I'll just let that dry. I'm choked up on my, on my brush, on my paintbrush, so I have a good edge or a good sculptor's feel to it. And I want to carve, every canvas has a painting that needs to be carved out of it from where I'm sitting. Often when I'm doing this kind of work, I'll also use my paintbrush with a long extension. Because it keeps me from being contrived. We love um, being contrived in our approach to life, right? We want everything to be the way it should be and isn't it great when it is well we've learned over this last while that everything isn't always as we'd like it to be and together we will achieve more and be connected in all we do we've never seen such connection on a global scale as we're seeing now and who knew Right? Who knew that we'd be working so hard to be kind to one another, to be gentle, peaceable, to be gracious, whether at a grocery store or yeah, just trying to get to a doctor's office or other things that we need. There we go. Okay, so I've just blocked in a little bit of, I've used the charcoal to set my design a little bit. And now, uh, the reason I use gesso, I just find it very uh, rich for me. In it turns my colors, when I use the white of gesso with them, it turns my colors, I find, into buttercream icing. That's what it feels like for me when I'm painting. I feel like I'm painting with buttercream icing. I'm just getting some cobalt blue onto my, it's hard to read that because it's, oh, it's a bit worn out but cobalt blue. I hope that's coming through in the right direction and not backwards. So I'm putting that out on my small palette and what I'm using, I should show you these. I don't know if you have been able to find um, these kind of paint brushes, uh, but I really enjoy them. And they're, um, they're rubber, they're rubberized brushes. I actually picked up mine when a friend of mine passed away in 2019 and I wrote on her, on my paintbrushes, everything that I learned and some of the times I knew her. So on this side, it says smile. On this side, it says shame off you. Instead of shame on you, I like saying shame off you to people. So they, if they're feeling shame or discouragement, it's helpful when we can just say, oh my, no, shame off you. Shame off you. I love that phrase. Someone said it to me once a few years ago and I went, I beg your pardon? And they said, shame off you. And I said, wow, man, this person barely knew me, but that was true. I had been carrying shame. You know, we all have life challenges. We all have a backstory, right? Challenges, trauma even. For each of us, it's a bit different. There may be similarities and we all process differently. So my way of processing isn't necessarily your way of processing. I'm now using a pyrrole red dark. I've put a manganese blue down as well in my palette. 
I do have some standard colors I use, and then I have some what I call fun colors. Another super important color for me is just alizarin crimson. And not to worry, if this takes us two weeks to do it, normally I teach this class in two hours. So I'm not going to rush. You have time to run and collect things. If you're just saying, oh, I don't have any of this stuff. Oh, well, maybe you have a couple of these things. If you have any questions, just ask me and I'll try to answer. Um, ultramarine blue, again, very important. I, a large tub for me again. This now understand between small tubes and large tubs. I'm trying to think, I, I have a small tube somewhere. I've always bought huge quantities of paint, but then I have to lug them around with me. So now I'm just, I'm starting to just buy small tubes, just tiny little ones. And then yes, I like golden paint, um, but I just buy small tubes so that they're easier for me to carry as I get older. Um, and the canvas is, I'm really on a super small canvas tonight because I wanted to make sure it was approachable for everyone. I love large canvases, but sometimes it's not realistic when I'm painting large and you're painting on a small canvas. It's not realistic um, because the proportions are different. And I want us to all feel um, that we're, you know, really able to work out of similar uh, limitations. And I know you don't all have small studios in your basement. But hey, I'm doing my best uh, to just uh, connect as best I can. Firm Tumber. Yes, one of my all-time faves. The other thing I keep handy, those of you who have grip strength challenges, I find, again, I've used my hands in rigorous ways over the years. So now, even if I don't have a challenge, I try to use uh, a pair of pliers to undo my tubes almost automatically so that I'm not straining my hands. And I can use my strength for painting instead of opening tubes. Yes, I literally, if you're following along, we're just putting out tubes of color. I decided we would do this together tonight because if I just start painting with whatever I've put out, then you know you, you haven't had a chance to, to do the same with me. <sighs> Naples yellow. If I had one color that I need in every painting. It really is Naples yellow. And this is the one that feels like buttercream icing when you put this with your gesso. I often use a lot of spray bottles too. I like to sometimes have some runs and drips in a painting. And we already did, we did burnt umber and now we're going to do raw umber. Okay, raw umber. If you're making notes, just write these things down. You can always rewatch this at another time. Also, if you have something you really want to know more about, I may not be the one who could assist you with that. However, you're always welcome to ask me and maybe I can incorporate it into something that we're doing here. Because I didn't do a background yet, I'm going to just, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I think we'll just go right to our nest in the time we have. It's 624. So I'm cognizant of the time. So this is what my palette looks like now, right? That's it. You can see my gesso running because it's a, it's a lighter, uh, it doesn't have as heavy a body as the other paints do. So I'm going to just take and mix now sometimes when I'm doing, I may put a camera in the ceiling when my, when I have my equipment back up and running properly. All I'm doing is mixing manganese blue right now with gesso. Okay, so once I have that done, just manganese blue and gesso. And a reasonable amount of that, okay, just mix them together. So I may put a camera in the ceiling just so that you can see above what I am doing 
as we go week by week. Okay, beautiful blue. I'm going to take a little bit of that. Actually, what I'm going to do is take, I'm just going to smear a bit of that on here because I want to clean my palette knife off. This is where my water will come in handy. I'm just going to spritz the piece slightly. Again, trying to use rags as opposed to, um, I do use paper towels once in a while, but I try to use rags so that I can um, rinse them out, wash them, reuse them many times. I sometimes use them to collect excess water or paint. Hey Cody, good to see you there. Hello Doug. Alright, so it's Doug who gave me my love for water. Doug, it would be wonderful to have you come and do a guest lesson. It's hard to do anything in an hour, but Doug's an extraordinary teacher if you ever have an opportunity or to see his work. Um, sometimes I don't always comment on everyone who pops online, but I just tore my gloves. So I'm using these lighter gloves again just because sometimes black gloves trigger people. I've come to find out, um, but someone gifted me a box of them and they're kind of small. All right. So while I have my while I have my gesso handy, which I love painting with because it makes everything like butter icing, no matter the color, just has a beautiful texture for me. And again, I may do this. I, these are small pieces. May have a camera up above as the weeks go on, but I'm just I really have blue and Naples yellow mixed with titan or with um, gesso. If you can see that, there we go learning some of the depth issues with the, this little tiny camera. I have a, a hotel card and I'm going to just go in mixing on my palette and you can do the same. I'm adding right now uh, raw umber and manganese blue. Makes a lovely brown, a bluish brown. Think about the branches you see on the ground. Now here's what I'm going to do. Use the tool the way it was designed. So if you want a long edge, you have a long edge. If you want it slightly curved, you can curve this with your hand, right? And we're just sculpting. We're just gonna sculpt out, just like, well, we're a little faster than the bird might be, right? We're just gonna create a little bit of a, a sculptural edge. I'm now putting some yellow on the short side, some, uh, it's a gesso with, So with uh, Naples yellow. Right. We have the branch here as well, right? But we're, I'm building a branch into mine. And remember, branches are not, uh, well, they can be very smooth and curvaceous, but often they are quite rough. If you think about the ones you find on the ground, if you're out walking your dog, or, uh, picking sticks off your lawn, it's very, it's rare that you find a perfectly smooth and curvy branch. So like as in nature, so, so also with what we're doing here. I'm now just spritzing my palette. Again, I had a small palette that I could hold in my thumb with this uh, tiny creative space here tonight. So that's what I'm using. If I'm using a, a larger canvas or more of a sustained piece, I may do um, uh, containers that I can put lids on. One of my colleagues who's with us tonight, he uses, I believe it's like corningware with the plastic uh, cap lid covers on them um, so that he can keep working with the same paint for a period of time. Right. So we're just again using the shape of our single tool. This is all we've used, right? We have a single tool right now for this piece, just using it the way the bird would build the nest, line by line, piece by piece. I'm using a little ultramarine blue. Um, I prefer to use blue for shadows over uh, any, I don't use black, so I use blue as my, for depth, ultramarine blue. 
or um, antiquarian, I can't pronounce it still. <laughs> and again, it was Doug who introduced me to that. Um, if I had one handy, I would hold it up to the camera so that you could see it. How would a bird build their nest? And what do they put in it? Right? What do you put in yours? If you were building safety and protection, peace for your home, we may have time to do backgrounds here, which if you're, if you're doing this at home, I recommend you do your background first. It's always better than trying to add it in at the end. But I wanna make sure we have time to um, have our nests emerge and that you have time to try these and experiment with these tools. A hotel key card, isn't that amazing? I find that quite fun. You can do all that with a hotel key card. Do you have any questions yet? Or can you let me know in the comments where you're from? And I'm going to try and just have a glance at my computer to see if any of you have made any comments that I can see. Okay, so if you want to sh let me know where you're from, that'd be amazing. Please let folks know that this, um, as long as I have strength and time, I'm going to continue creating like this with whatever I have in my home, just like you. I'm just rinsing off my hotel card now. I'm gonna use whatever I have in my home to create with and attempt to see beauty released. As I create week to week. Well, that's great, Cody. That's awesome. You're doing some beautiful work, I see. Cody is an uh, emerging artist as well. Now, I'm going to go back as others have joined us. This, this particular nest, as we're waiting for that to set a little bit, this nest was just painted on an old rag wrapped with tacks. Right? So while there's a beautiful time, there's time to do purist work. For those of us who are creating at home or you can't get materials, this is an old t-shirt put on a small shelf. Okay, an old t-shirt put on a small shelf. And yes, I wrote the word nest across this one. Not sure that this is finished, but I wanted you to just see that you can take an old t-shirt. You can take an old pair of jeans and create something beautiful with them. Everything, you know, maybe if you're investing, invest in your paint, um, in your basic colors and, and go from there. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna go in now and take a, I think I'll take a paint brush this time or a smaller palette knife. I mentioned to you, I love these rubber ones. It's just all rubber but it's um, like a paintbrush, but it's one solid piece of rubber. I'm mixing alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber to get a, a richer black. It's not black, but a richer, almost like a, just a rich gray. to go in and put the inside of the nest in if you were viewing from where we are there'll still be light in here but this would establish a sense of the darker edges and where there might be some shadows in some ways when you do this you'll start to see negative shapes emerging and you can work with those. I love negative shapes. Just let the painting, in many ways, paint itself. I'm not sure if that makes sense for you, but it does for me. I believe inside every canvas is a painting. And sometimes, you know, when you're doing a commission, you're full on. Again, see how I'm holding? I, this is how I hold my brush. Uh, often when I'm creating, I'll sculpt with it. In this case, because I'm trying to do a more detailed block of color in here, I'm going to put my fingertip down. I 
want your eye to stop here, to rest right there, and we'll highlight that. I'm not sure you can see the details of this um, with the camera and lighting we have, but I'll try to post these as we go to as I finish them up. Natural colors, right? Natural colors. Now the sun is going to be rising behind our beautiful nest. So since I have a little bit of time, my paintbrush is dirty. Yes, I do have a habit of painting with one paintbrush. Sometimes I'll just do a whole painting with one especially if I'm just doing little sketches rather than continuously changing them. Um, trying to keep, again, your if you keep a long handle on your brush, then you can, it's not as, as uh, fussy, if you like. It's not like it's your pencil in your hand. You'll get maybe a more painterly feel to what you're doing. just like I did the nest. I want to show this uh, dark edge in contrast for the brush, the uh, branch. I had dark under here, but I think I'm gonna lighten that up because I've decided everything's gonna be light around here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more water down with my spritzer just go in and lift some of that off and truly this is like watching paint dry in many ways right i hope that what it is for you is just connecting maybe even right in the um right in the feed here you know is there anything you've been challenged with during this season of your life that you found you know you find you're coming out of or has creativity helped you get through it are you facing some challenges that are overwhelming for you still I find that sometimes when I haven't been able to paint for a while I just I have to have I just have to get into my studio it's it's and just be rescued by the creative process, if you like. And what color are the branches you pick up on the edge of the road? If you look at them carefully, when you're out walking your dog or hanging out with a friend on a trail, you know, they're red, they're rust, they're blue, they're black, they're tan, they're not all one color. too smooth. Just using the edge of your... Oh, thanks, Kriya. Just using the edge of your tool to sculpt, lift off, as well as put down. I had spritzed this with water. So now I can go underneath my nest. And again, create like the birds do, right? piece at a time, something's sticking out, something gets pulled out or dropped, they go back in. They're not going to be disheartened or discouraged by a little delay. Or if they do, they sure don't show it. They keep singing every day. You know, what can we learn from the birds, right? Life is for the birds. Well, my gosh, that actually might get us through this season. Maybe we could take a lesson from them.
they seem so carefree. I was saying as I was planning on coming online and, and painting from here, often when I paint in a public square, I call it, in public gallery settings or whatnot, I, we talk a lot about life and virtues and, and lessons from in living and whatnot, but oftentimes um, I stop short. I'll say, oh, you know, I have these deeply rooted convictions and foundations of faith in my soul. Um, and we know that. If you know me, you know that. But I try to, you know, not overwhelm you too much. But all that to say this, I don't have the scripture at the tip of my tongue here, but there is one that says in the ancient text um, that the birds don't toil or spin. Uh, they just don't worry. They're provided for. Um, hard to imagine us not worrying some days, but wow, if we can, you know, trust that we all share different faith perspectives for sure. Mine is, you know, trust that my creator will, he sees us and, you know, he's providing for all of us. No matter what we believe or who we believe in, I just believe that for all of us. I've just spritzed the whole piece again so I can go in and just enjoy using my used sponge from the kitchen to smooth out, get a little bit waiting for this to set up a bit in here the the nest area again lover of sponges and hotel key cards oh, any questions so far I'm going to spritz the bottom a bit more if you can see it here because it has a nice it's getting legs it's like a fine wine in a glass it gets legs to it and it starts um, creating some just some beautiful wispy patterns once again you'll hear me say I use rags over and over again trying to use rags that are shirts and whatnot that are worn out rather than using paper towel to all the time, just try to preserve as much and of uh, the environment as we can. Um, I'm flipping this over so that I can do the same kind of teasing, if you like, I'll call it, of the water um, and the, with the water and the paint to create some legs going the other direction. And I know that if you're painting in your kitchen, you'll have a harder time of this because you don't necessarily have the ability to have things drip on the floor like I do. But oh yeah, that's what I needed. It was just up here too heavy um, see the the beauty of just what is I love the tools when they work for themselves right when and I just got paint on my pants but of course I do that all the time so when the tools work for themselves water will work for you to create beauty in and of itself right? isn't that nice modeling that's happened there it's, it's delicate it's free it's gentle and uh, if we had longer to create, then I would use um, a gel medium. And I'll show you. I just use a lot of gloss medium and varnish. Right? Because that I use that generally instead of water. It makes it has a nice uh, thick consistency with the paint and works well for me. I'm going to find. I'm just going to take a turkey feather here to go in to pull back some of the some of these shapes. Remember, I was saying to you that um, birds are they're gathering and they're weaving their nests. You know, they weave them piece by piece with little beaks. How can we mimic that with tools that we might have? already in our hands. What do we already have in our hands that would make you know, a beautiful nest, that would make our home nests even richer and fuller and an even greater gift to our families. We have these times, some of you are alone, some of you have been with young people that you thought were going to be gone from home now and they're still at home. Well, that is an incredible gift. It's also a bit of a challenge, right? being on your own. If you ever wanted peace and quiet, well, you, you have it almost too much, right? Hmm. 
Okay, okay, so that's starting. We're looking okay. Yeah, I, I like finding tools. Sometimes I'll make paintbrushes just to that mimic, you know, what I want in a, in a, in a shape. I remember teaching art camp um, once at a, it wasn't the Durham Ward art camp, it was a different one. When I saw a young girl outside, she had given them an assignment, she was outside painting. And I said, how are you doing? She says, I don't have a paintbrush to draw, um, sorry, to draw grass. I said, well, well, sure you do, you're surrounded by them. She said, what do you mean? I said, pick a stick, break it, and you have a paintbrush, a beautiful long grass palette knife. Yes, I want this to be a bit thinner, not quite so dense there. Making that a little darker on the screen if I can for you. I'm not sure if it will work, depending on what you're watching on. It could be a little bleached out. Okay, so what are some of the things that you're doing to keep yourself well during this season that we're in? Hmm? I need to be walking more. I'm working on that. My you know, sitting and working all the time. Again, I'm using this tool, um, holding it. It's hard to show you this way, but I'm holding it like this rather than it's a paintbrush. I don't want to hold it like a pencil. It's not a pencil. It's a sculpting tool for me. I mean, you hold it however you want. But for me, I want to hold it more like a sculpting tool. This color was manganese blue mixed with So, sorry. Sometimes when I'm painting and I'm enjoying it, my right side of the brain doesn't always have it. It's not always in a fluid state with the left. Oh, that's nice. Need to highlight the front of the nest where it might be catching the sun. Again, little sticks, right? Birds have come along. They've put their little sticks in place. They're building their nest stick by stick. How do you build a life stick by stick? We have so much to learn from the beauty of, for me, from my heart, from where God made for us. Uh, just how lovely. I plan to be here week by week, just creating with and for you. Maybe some weeks, sometimes my, if you have, I don't know what settings you have to have on your phone or computer, sometimes my screen will say, oh, so-and-so's on, bring them on. And I'll send them a, a, a link to get them to come on. They don't always come on. But sometimes I will do that. I might say, hey, come and join me. And then tonight I'm doing, um, a podcast with a friend of mine. Her name is Lorna McDougall and she's a lovely soul. She's invited me. She does a podcast called Audible Incense. So again, if you don't, if you're not, if you want to hear my heart about how I create, why I create, what I create from, I've decided that I actually don't paint by philosophy. I really paint by theology, which theo meaning God thoughts, if you like, rather than philosophy. And I always thought I painted by philosophy what I believed in or hoped in or on. But in fact, I finally realized some of the reason I'm creating at home here so we can do this just from my, my home space is because, man, I get to talk about theology. And it really, I wanted to share my process with you about how I create not just what I create and it's not just painting technique for me some artists will say you shouldn't you know you ought not to to create meaning again just a feather a turkey feather uh, I didn't take it off of a turkey I came across a number of them on the ground 
my friend's place when I was on a walk and I just like to gather them because they're a beautiful paintbrush. Um, so, and they're at both ends. So depending on what you're trying to do, they work at, at both ends to create, uh, give you the shapes you need. Brick by brick, stick by stick. It'll be the odd random one that comes forward, right? Sticks out off of the painting or off of, out of the nest. Contrast, blue is beautiful for contrast uh, for the depths and shadows. Colors, shadows for me are not black. They are full of color and finding the colors, seeing it, looking at things long enough, seeing those colors and bringing them out. They got a twist tie or something in this particular nest. You know, they pick up all sorts of stuff, right? I'm surprised. I didn't think we we're actually going to get done this in one, one week, but it looks like we might. We have to go under the nest here an underside of shadows here too. The branch starts peeking through on the other side. You can paint in front of something or you can paint what's behind it. If you think about an apple on a table, Think about an apple on a table. Um, you can draw everything behind the apple or you can draw the apple itself. I would rather draw everything behind the apple myself. So often that's what I try to do. Contrast. Contrasting what is behind makes that branch pop out and come towards you. And yes, there's dark edges here. And on the other side, it will also be contrasted with the light coming towards it. And a hint of light on the top of it. We might do some, some, uh, Oh, thanks, Kriya. Good to see you and have a great week. You have lots on your plate. Lots of challenging leadership um, realities for many of you, my friends. And we're thinking about you, thinking the best for you. I, I love community leaders, honestly. Some people wrestle with things. Uh, not me. I just wouldn't. I just really... I don't envy the challenges that leaders are, are facing. I really don't. Okay, so there's the edges of our nest. Can we're pretty much finished that. Might have put a little bit too much of free form there. So I'm going to spritz it back a bit. Oops, sorry. It's kind of good. Yes, we're working on my phone this week, so I do kick it once in a while. I had a different setup in mind, but uh, well, last night I dropped my external hard drive, and it didn't recover. <laughs> Sometimes that just happens. And we're going to roll with it, because you know everything in life isn't planned, right? We're just going to roll with it. Just using the paintbrush to pull back as well as apply on. So it has two functions. You can put things on with it and you can pull them off. Now, I would like to get to a point where I could put a couple eggs in here. Um, and we're just a couple minutes from finishing. So let me see if I can find a tool that will do that. And then that next week we'll we'll try something else. Just gonna softly pull back. Try to pull back some of the paint here and put in a few eggs. An egg 
these are not round and you can't see all of them, right? You can see things peeking through. Often we think of three in a nest. Sometimes the nest will be invaded by other kinds of birds and you'll have multiple colors in there. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And that you come back next week or find someone to share this with who might enjoy it. Maybe you'll pick up your paints. I love eggs and nests. Who doesn't? I mean, come on. Who, who really doesn't love seeing a bird's nest in the spring and little birds' eggs and the promise of promise of new life, right? I think we can all benefit from that. I'm switching to my feather now, just in this last couple minutes. So we can hopefully provide some highlights. I'm going to spritz my palette again. Just to keep the paint thin. Sometimes that um, the um, Sometimes the uh, mediums, the poor mediums, are good for that because they will, uh, they allow you to oh yeah, there's a limit of how much paint I can put on. All right, so let me just, I don't if know if my electric uh, snod turned itself off. Hi, Karen. Good to see you. Just finishing up here. So I wanted to be able to just say hello uh, from my heart to yours, from my house to yours. And I'll see you guys next week. Next week, um, oh, maybe I'll show you this finished nest. It'll dry a little bit more and I'll finish it off. And then next week we may do, I'm not sure, we may do a lighthouse. This is the first step of a just a, a lighthouse, which represents, again, our homes. These nests, nurturing nests, lighthouse as a home. When waves obliterate, after we've drawn this beautiful lighthouse, and waves obliterate it. Um, or we may do, I love doing uh, forest walks, right? Where people can get, take a forest shower, if you like, or get lost in a cathedral of a forest, and you can make that realistic, or you can make that abstract. If you have something else um, that you know I can do or have done before, please let me know. And hopefully next week, if you're back again at six o'clock, we might try six o'clock for a couple weeks. I may try seven o'clock. Let me know what works for you. And I'll try to keep it to an hour. And can't fully finish a piece maybe in an hour, but yeah, it's a fun sketch. So until next time, unless you have any questions, if you do type them in quickly, 658. If you type them in, then I'll respond. Uh, and oh, look at that. I think I can bring you on camera, Karen, if you're willing. I don't know, I'm pressing the button, but it's not working for me. Sometimes I will invite you on camera because I'm just making the camera wiggle. Sorry, I tried. Uh, I may invite you on camera if you're in the neighborhood, uh, meaning if you're in the if you're in the digital neighborhood. Uh, do take care. Have a wonderful week. God bless. We'll talk soon.